Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Hope for Healthcare with Dr. Katie Cole in partnership with ICD Healthcare Network. Dr. Katie Cole is a holistic physician, organizational well being consultant, and change agent, working with industry leaders and in proven strategies to heal our national healthcare system and our culture of medicine. Stay tuned to hear today's speaker. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Hope for Healthcare podcast. I am truly honored to introduce one of my good friends and colleagues, Dr. Louisa Duran. She is a board certified endocrinologist practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area, right down the road from me. And she is co founder of Pink Coat MD, an innovative digital platform designed to help women physicians thrive. After silently suffering from physician burnout within her first five years of practice and learning of her colleagues' near-death experience following severe physician burnout, seeing thousands of other women physicians struggling alone, and hearing her young daughter even say that she wants to become a physician, Dr. Duran was propelled to collaborate with industry experts to provide solutions to burnout so that she and her colleagues may thrive. Dr. Duran also authored How to Thrive as a Woman Physician and is a sought-after keynote speaker. Louisa strongly believes that helping women physicians thrive in clinical practice creates a healthier, more equal, joyful world. Well, welcome. And Louisa, it is an absolute honor and privilege to have you on the podcast today. Thank you, Katie. I am so honored to be here. And I have really, yeah, I've just been looking forward to this podcast so much. So thank you for taking time out on a Saturday to be with us today. Absolutely. I'm so excited to connect with you and your audience about something I'm personally passionate about. And I thank you for creating this podcast mm -hmm. and for doing all the amazing work that you're mm -hmm. doing for all of us in healthcare. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Louisa. Well, I usually start out by just saying, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in healing physician burnout and working with phys women physicians specifically. Sure, I'd love to. And I want to start by sharing with your audience who I know are healthcare leaders looking to make a huge impact in healthcare today, that we must invest in healing and retaining our healthcare workforce, especially our women physicians who are disproportionately impacted by physician burnout and leaving our profession at alarming rates. And I'm happy to get into the specifics later in the podcast. Um, but to answer your question, I am an adult endocrinologist. I'm in clinical practice in the San Francisco Bay Area. I've been in practice now for about 10 years. I absolutely love what I do. Every day I use my decades of training, I'll repeat decades of training, to care for people in my community, mothers, fathers, coaches, you know, amazing people in the community, get them to better health, help them thrive. And like all my physician colleagues and friends, we've dedicated our life to this beautiful profession. We've studied at the best schools, trained at the best hospitals, and we want to keep practicing medicine for as long as possible. But I need, and many of my colleagues need the support to do that. And that's why I co-founded Pink Code MD. I, and, you know, we are so grateful that you, you know, that you were able to turn, you know, the trauma that you experienced in healthcare with even other physician colleagues and friends, that you've been able to really turn this around and to really provide a framework for educating, leadership coaching, and things like that. So I'm really excited to get into the nuts and bolts of your organization. Yes, thank you, Katie. And just to highlight my personal experience, you know, this is a, a, a area that I'm passionate about because I personally experienced burnout myself within the first five years. And just to give your audience um, an idea of what that could look like for a physician, I remember uh, coming home after a long day in clinic, opening the door to my home to see my three little kids jumping for joy, saying, mommy, let's play. And all I wanted to do was go straight to the couch, curl up in a ball and pass out like a vegetable. And this for me went on for months to a point where I thought there was something physically wrong with me. Like my endocrinology brain kicked in and thought, have I developed 
Hypertension. Low thyroid or yeah, something. Yeah, some kind of, you know, physical condition. And I went to see my primary care physician, you know, God bless all the primary care physicians out there. She ran a bunch of tests and she said, Louisa, you're fine. But I knew in that moment I was not fine. Mm -hmm. And later I would find and discover for myself that what I was experiencing was emotional exhaustion, which is a leading symptom of burnout among women physicians. Mm. That's really interesting. So that's how, so women physicians can even present a little bit differently with their symptoms of burnout than, than male physicians. Yes. And I think it's really important for women physicians to understand that emotional exhaustion is a very common experience. And I think it's really important for healthcare leaders to understand that when a, a physician um, experiencing experiences any symptom of burnout, she is likely to leave her current position within two years. Wow. So it's really critical, Katie, that everyone in the healthcare community mm -hmm. understands burnout, is aware that burnout happens, mm -hmm. is aware of the symptoms and signs of burnout, mm -hmm. so that we can start taking action immediately. Well, and that's part of what your organization does is I think you do a really good job of educating uh, your members on burnout and helping them. I think we know that when people start to recognize on the front line that their peers are even burned out, which is why peer support coaching has been so effective in addressing burnout, it helps to create that culture change on the front line where burnout no longer is seen as something to be embarrassed about. It's actually directly due to causes at work in the work environment. Yes, and thank you so much for sharing that because um, only when I really delved into this work with Pink Code MD did I discover the that the majority of physician burnout is actually due to systemic factors, mm -hmm. not individual factors. So we know from published studies that 80% of our burnout is related to our work environment. So mm -hmm. our medical culture, um, our leadership, our work environments, and not because a physician is in any way a failure or there's in any way, you know, deficient in some way. Um, and in fact, there was that one study published in GMA that showed even the most resilient physician who scored the highest in this resiliency um, study, 40% mm -hmm. still had burnout. So um, that tells us a lot that we are dealing with systemic factors that are just at odds with us. Mm -hmm. And the way I look at it as a physician in practice who, you know, all I want to do is go into work, be my best self, mm -hmm. do my best work. You know, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm so honored to be an endocrinologist. I get to help so many people living with diabetes and chronic diseases live their best life. But in order for me to do that work, I need to show up as my best self to provide the best healing. And that is why I'm personally passionate about doing all that I can to become my best self and to do what I can to stay strong and healthy mm -hmm. um, amidst the healthcare systemic factors that have yet to change. Mm -hmm. So can you tell our audience a little bit more about Pink Coat MD and how you address burnout or resolving burnout? Absolutely. So Pink Coat MD is an organization designed specifically for women physicians. Mm -hmm. We are dedicated to women physicians thriving. We believe our world is a better place when women physicians are thriving, when we're all thriving together in our healthcare uh, environments. And we do three things really well. One, we offer easy access to evidence-based resources promoting physician wellness. Second, we offer a safe, dynamic community for mm -hmm. women physicians to come together anywhere and everywhere to learn from each other, learn from experts, grow together, thrive together. And third, we offer world-class leadership development to support a women physician throughout her entire career. I love that, Louisa. And I love that you're, you and also Dr. Tammy Chang is your co-founder 
are really focusing on the the women leadership training as well as building community. I think that that's really important. Um, I think when we as women physicians, and I know I I'm in doing my own coaching with Dr. Elsie Co, and knowing that I have a community of female physicians just like me who have been through some of the similar struggles at work and and had you know struggled with getting promoted to leadership positions, um, really learning how to overcome some of those barriers um, has been instrumental in my career and helped me um, resolve my own burnout as well. Absolutely. I tell Tammy, my dear friend, so Dr. Tammy Ching, who is my co-founder and my partner in this journey, amazing physician. She practices pediatric hematology oncology. She's mm -hmm. a phenomenal friend. I've known her since we were 18 years old. I tell her every day that the work we've done with Pink Code MD, what we've created has saved my career and honestly has saved my life. I, I'm a different person because of the support that we've been able to put together. Can you give us an example how your own journey with Pink Code MD and leadership training helped to turn your career around in your own burnout? Sure, well, for me personally, um, within the first five years of practicing medicine as an attending, and you mentioned this in the introduction, I um, suffered from physician burnout. And for me, what that looked like was not only the emotional exhaustion, but I also felt incredibly lonely and isolated. I was the only female physician in my clinic. Um, I am the first doctor in my family, so I have no other doctors in my inner circle who could relate to my personal experience. Um, and I really just felt incredibly isolated, like I had nobody to turn to on those days that were incredibly hard, mm -hmm. that I felt like I needed support. And so it was that feeling of loneliness that also, um, you know, made me mm -hmm. uh, look for connection and look for community. And so it's our safe pink code MD community that has transformed my personal experience because now I have this wonderful community of amazing women physicians who are coming together from all over. We have many physicians from all over the country. We also have had women physicians join us globally. We had a woman physician from Iceland, from India, from Costa Rica. Oh. And you know what's amazing about that, Katie, is that even in their um, countries, they are experiencing the same challenges as, you know, as us here. Mm -hmm. um, they're experiencing burnout and they're feeling isolated. They're fe feeling alone as well. And so this community that allows for us to just come together, connect as women physicians is incredibly healing, incredibly magical because we can relate to one another um, in our experience as women physicians. There's unique um, aspects to our journey that only another woman physician who's been through the, you know, the, the, the crazy training that we all go through in medicine and can relate to what it's like to be working for these high pressured uh, healthcare systems and environments. Um, and so to be able to just uh, come together and get that, you know, have that understanding and say, I get it mm -hmm. is incredibly powerful. And then that allows us to not only say, hey, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. There is common humanity here. You know, most of us are feeling burnout. And the statistics show that, you know, one in three physician today, is that correct? Uh, I really? actually, the latest data is, I mean, I think it's close to 70% now out of medscape. Yeah, I, I, yeah it's, it's, an, it's an insane number. Well, two thirds of physicians and nurses have an exit plan in the next five years. That is insane. I mean, it's just every time I read this stuff, it just gets, you know, more alarming. And I think your call to action is perfect today because now is the time to be very assertive and proactive in implementing these programs to really save not only physicians' lives, nursing lives, healthcare employee lives, create a more healthy working environment for all healthcare employees, um, but especially for women because we, I don't know, I think it's less than two to 3% of CEO positions are held by women, right? Oh, yes. 
and let and about that probably in healthcare. I know there's less than one percent CEOs in healthcare, and we're starting to lose women physicians in leadership roles. And you talked about that at the National Burnout Symposium, that women are stepping back from their current leadership roles because of burnout and not being able to have a work life balance and and yeah. sort of family. So yes, and I also want to highlight since we're on the topic that the numbers are even worse for women of color. And I want to highlight that because we also know from the research that diversity in leadership is powerful mm-hmm. for an organizational or an organization on a well being scale, but also from a um, profitability scale. We know diverse teams make for better organization. So it's absolutely critical that we address this issue. Um, But to your point about some examples of how our community has really helped women physicians, Katie, um, I absolutely want to highlight a a couple examples that we commonly see among women physicians. Um, For instance, we oftentimes see a woman physician who is just overwhelmed. She's a new attending early in her career, first job out of training, working a full schedule, 1.0 FTE, behind on chart notes, delivering excellent care, yet feeling exhausted, overwhelmed, thinking about cutting back, leaving her job, yet not so easy because she's the primary breadwinner. She needs the health insurance. She's got student loans. So she joins us. We provide immediate support. That's what I'm most proud about with our platform is we can provide immediate, easy access to support and resources. We figure out her needs. She gets the help that she needs. Then she's feeling better. She's Mm -hmm. more supported. She's in control. She's feeling more balanced, healthier, happier, falling in love with medicine again. More importantly, not quitting her job. And this is a common scenario that we will see in our community. Another example is of a woman physician who is just offered a leadership role within her organization. Um, She's feeling hesitant, unsure, doubting her abilities to lead. Mm -hmm. She takes our leadership development uh, course. Then she feels more confident, prepared. She takes on that role of director, chief, president, and adds tremendous value to her organization and her community. Mm-hmm. And these are just a couple examples of how Pink Code MD truly helps transform physician lives for the better. I mean, that that is wonderful news, Louisa. And I know that you guys have made such a big impact in the female physician community. I'm curious to hear maybe one specific thing that you might teach women physicians about embracing their new leadership role and how they're able to maybe move past the imposter syndrome? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I I want women to understand that they are needed in leadership today more than ever. Mm-hmm. We know diversity in leadership is huge for an organizational well-being. It's, it's better for our communities. It's better for our world. As a mother of a daughter who aspires to be a doctor, I want her to see more women physicians as leaders um, creating the change that our world needs to see. And so I think there's a huge need for for all of us to step into that role. I view every single physician as a leader. So um, you don't 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 get uh, don't be afraid of not having the title. You are a leader just by being a physician. I love that. Right. That's very, that's very important because we we are taught to be leaders, but we have lost the perspective that we are now because of our current healthcare culture. And we no longer have the same level of decision making we did when we were in residency in medical school. That's right. And one thing that we are um, you know, teaching women in our programs is the importance of leading not necessarily by micromanaging others, but by being a leader who is clear on her values Mm -hmm. and lives in alignment with her values. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important leadership um, skill that we're not taught in medical school. 
And one of the things that I've learned in the leadership development programs that we've done is that leadership is all about inner work. You know, I think Dr. Kelsey, uh, Elsie Co mm -hmm. talked about this on your podcast, how leadership development really is an inside out job. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is one thing that um, I think is so, so necessary for all of us to have the opportunity to do. And that's why, again, I'm really excited that we can make that an easy um, resource for women physicians out there. Well, I'm really glad that you touched on that, Louisa, because I will say that, you know, as, as a burned out physician years ago, one of the things that I had to work on immediately was what are my values and what are my strengths? And as physicians, we're not taught that in med school and residency. We don't have any of that leadership training development. So I, then when I figured out what my values were, I realized, well, no wonder I haven't been happy in my job because I've been joining organizations that are not in alignment with my values. And I've been taking leadership positions that did not set me up for success because of the team I was with and they, and the organization, they did not identify with my values. And they also were not utilizing my strengths. And I think if you want to be a successful leader, that's one of the foundational pieces that you need to have. Absolutely. And I think it also helps with, um, you know, the feelings of overwhelm, because part of what happens when we're, uh, you know, thrown into the attending role and, you know, put into our communities as that physician in practice is that a lot of people do view us as leaders, even if we don't feel like we're leaders. And so what I experienced was more people asking me to do more in the community. Can you lead this? Can you chair this? Can you you know, volunteer for this. And what I thought was, quote unquote, the right thing to do was to take on those roles. And to your point, some of the, those roles were not necessarily aligned with my values, my core values. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and this is, I think, somewhat inherent to our medical training to say yes, yes, yes to everything, right? Because we want to please everyone. We want to make everyone happy. You know, in some ways we got through our medical training by doing everything for everyone and getting that star recommendation, that star grade. But really that can backfire, um, to, uh, that can backfire for us when we're out in the real world, not only trying to be the best doctor that we can be, but also trying to have a life outside of medicine. Mm -hmm. And so getting really clear on your values, for instance, one of my co core values is family, allows me to say, hey, you know, actually I I'd love to, but I'm going to need to pass. Here's someone else who could do an amazing job as well, because I want to go and, you know, be with my daughter and watch her swim during her swim meets or practices. I want to do this. I want to be with my mom for her hospital visits. You know, you start to really align your, um, your life choices with your values. And then that keeps you whole. It keeps you grounded. It keeps you centered. And again, back to my earlier point, allows me to show up every day as the endocrinologist in my practice to give the best care to my patients. Mm. Well, and I, my sense is that not only is it helping with life work balance, as I call it, not work life, it should be life work. It should all just kind of we call it work life integration. So we actually do do a whole uh, session on that in, in our pink code MD community, because we know that work life balance is actually a top struggle faced by women physicians. That was uh, reported in a Medscape survey of over, I think, uh, a thousand women physicians. Yes. And I love that you call it integration because really our work is our life. It's our passion. It's our calling. And we we're, if it's your passion and calling, like it is with Pink Coat MD and my podcast, you know, here we're together on a Saturday morning and we're here together because we value this, this conversation and we value this topic. And we want to make sure that healthcare le leaders nationwide and even residency directors are listening to this. Medical students have access to this information um, because that's part of our value system. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I value my top value is love. So, you know, love for myself, love for my community, love for my patients, my family. And to your point, Katie, that's why I'm here on a Saturday morning because I love my career. I love what we do in medicine. Mm -hmm. I love everything that we're all trying to do here, which is to really elevate and improve our healthcare 
um, for all of us, really, because we're a community, we're all integrated, we're all connected in some way. Um, and so it's important that we all come together on this to, um, to make it better for all of us. I agree. I agree, Louisa. And, you know, there's one thing I wanted to touch on, too, is, you know, for healthcare executive leaders, you know, the the coaching on the front line can be very valuable because it is shifting physicians' perspective on their environment, right? And, you know, when you, uh, when you, as a physician, when you have burnout, you're not coming from an empowered place anymore. You're coming from, especially as a woman, you're coming from an exhausted, emotionally depleted place. And so you might view an interaction at work as being a negative interaction when in reality it was meant to be supportive, or you may feel like you don't have the power to talk to your office manager or your medical director about some issues. And having that frontline coaching can change your perspective and help you kind of move into more of an empowered place. I agree a hundred percent. And I have uh, personally benefited from professional coaching. That was one of the first resources I turned to when I started suffering from burnout. And it transformed me because again, it's one-on-one -on -one private confidential support with a professional mm -hmm. who is certified as a coach and knows how to have those very sensitive conversations with you in a very safe, psychologically safe space to do that inner work get clear on who you are, what you want, what really matters to you, what's true to you. And to, um, to your point, get out of a place where we're feeling dark, exhausted, overwhelmed, and find um, how, find the skill set, because it really is a skill set mm -hmm. to be able to reframe and to, um, you know, align yourself with whatever is most meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. so that you can reach a place that gives you more agency, control, and, um, you know, ability to, to live the life that you want for you. Ah, oh, I love that, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for, you, you really brought that all together very nicely. And, you know, I know that one of the last messages you wanted to leave with our audience was a call to action. Um, would you like to, to mention that? <laughs> Yes, yes. And I also, before um, we end here, I do want to give a shout out to my uh, wonderful coach, Betsy Flanagan. She's actually also partnered with us as a co-founder of Pink Code MD. She does amazing work in the community. She teaches leadership at Stanford and UC Berkeley. And we are so grateful for her and her leadership and all of the um, wonderful work that she's bringing to Pink Code MD in terms of our programming, the leadership development. So I do want to give a shout out to her on that. She's also helped me tremendously. I, I would not be the doctor I am today without her support and her guidance. So um, just wanted to give a shout out to her. Um, but to your point about my call to action, I have a call to all the healthcare leaders out there. I want you to know that the time to act is now. We are losing too many brilliant physicians to burnout. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the statistics show that within the next 10 years, we are expected to have a physician shortage of over 139,000 physicians. And, you know, that's going to leave us with not enough physicians to take care of our kids, our parents, our loved ones, mm -hmm. even ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we must prioritize physician wellness which means investing now, allocating funds to this effort now, because absolutely we must heal our healthcare workforce, especially our women physicians. And at Pink Code MD, we see a huge opportunity for women physicians um, to, to partner with another organization to help heal women physicians. And we're ready to join in this effort to retain, attract, develop our women physicians. So please reach out to me if you're interested as a healthcare organization in this effort. Mm -hmm. um, you can visit our website, www.pincodemd.com. You can email us directly at info at And let's, let's change the world together. Mm -hmm. We're ready. I love that. 
And absolutely, and for the audience listening, we'll, of course, love all this information posted in social media and on Dr. Duran's bio page on the website. So that'll be there for everyone. Um, well, any was there anything else that you wanted to address today, Louisa, before we wrap up? Um, I just want to thank you, Katie. You are um, doing amazing work with this podcast. I've been listening to your episodes. Yeah, you. I am so like honored to be a guest today. Um, I feel very much in community with you, with Bill, with um, Paul, with um, uh, everyone who you've had, Dr. Um, Eliso, Sadie Eliso. Yes, yes. It's really a powerful thing, community. And so Aww. don't you feel that way? I do, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. We're for not doing this work alone because it's huge work, you know, wanting yeah. to see a cultural shift to see a healthier, brighter culture in medicine. We can't do it alone. We and can't I, do it alone. Yeah. And I'm really grateful that, you know, I found you, you found me, and we're having these wonderful conversations with the world out there to, um, you know, call us all to action. Yes, and it, it and it does take a community to impact positive change in healthcare, and we are building an amazing community of providers and leaders and thought leaders. And I I also feel very honored to know you, Lisa, and uh, I look forward to co-creating with you in the future. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yes. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in today. Thank you for ICD events and healthcare network for sponsoring. And thank you, Louisa, for being an amazing guest on the podcast today. And we will make sure that we amplify all of the information that we talked about today. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>